Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday. Anyways, as per usual, we are here with our friendly vintage TV, checking out people's techniques, hopefully making them a little bit better, keep helping keep people further from injury and closer to gains. Uh, as far as submissions go, we are up to October 21st. Uh, if you guys have submitted past that date, then you will hear from us soon. But to get right down to it here, let's kick things off. Our first submission today is some squats from a guy named Paco. Now Paco is doing some squats here and he says his biggest issue is that his hips shoot up and you can see that as he comes out of the bottom of the squat, uh, his hips kind of rise behind him, his knees shoot back. We talk about this fault a fair bit. Some of the common cues that we like to use are to keep the knees forward over the toes as you initiate the drive out of the hole of your squat. Another thing is to maintain adequate tension through your trunk and upper back to brace and keep the bar in a good position. But I think the biggest thing here, Paco, is I think you're just kind of rushing out of the bottom. And I think that rush is translating to the fault of the knees driving back, weight shifting too far to the heels and the hips rising behind you. I think if you were to slow down your changing of direction in the bottom of your squat ever so slightly and worry about being in a good position before you worry about accelerating the bar, I think that that would solve the problem. So let's go forward with that in mind, thinking about being a little bit more controlled as you reinitiate the, uh, or sorry, as you initiate the concentric or upward phase of the squat and hopefully that will help you. Now Paco also submitted some deadlifts and he said his biggest issue is that his back isn't holding tension properly. Now I would argue that based on what his shoulders and upper back and lats are doing there is that the back holding tension isn't necessarily the issue here. I think what the issue is, is again, you're kind of rushing it in the initial phases of the lift. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about keeping that weight on your heels a little bit better. Uh, it looks like when you rush it, we're kind of tipping out over the bar uh, and that bar is gonna drift away from you because of that. So a couple things we can do to fix that are gonna be to sit your butt down a little bit better, make sure you stay back, uh, and again, be a little bit more patient off the floor. So patience is the overall lesson here, Paco. We need you to be a little bit more patient with how you're initiating the lifts and worry about positioning before you start worrying about acceleration. Our next submissions come from a guy named Michael. Now, Michael, I just wanted to put your squat in the video because I think it's fantastic. Um, I, I have nothing to critique about this, but everybody check it out because that's a good squat. Now, with Michael's deadlift, however, uh, we're noticing a little bit of shoulders in front of the bar. So one thing I would try to do is I would try to pivot at the ankles and shift your entire body weight back so that the line of pull, this being the bar, this being your shoulders, shifts back this way to a little bit more straight up and down. If you look on the video, you can kind of see shoulders are in front of the bar as opposed to directly above the bar. And again, that's gonna lead to the bar drifting away from you, a little bit like what Paco was doing. Um, I don't see many faults in terms of your back rounding out or anything like that. Uh, the mechanics of the lift itself look good. I think your starting position could be a little bit better in that you need to bring yourself back over the bar a little bit more, uh, or sorry, back in line with the bar as opposed to out in front of the bar. And that's really all I have to say, Michael. Other than that, uh, keep up the good squats and let's see if those couple of tweaks can help that deadlift. Our next submission comes from Randy. Now, Randy deadlifts so hard here that he passes the hell out. Um, it's hard to discern too many technical issues from an absolute max effort deadlift, but we're gonna give it a shot here. Um, first off, losing position a little bit off the floor, as you can see the back collapses, the knees cave in a little bit. So some of those um, pretty common faults going on, generally what we're gonna cue people to do to fix those is gonna be to glue the lats down so we keep the chest open, keep positioning that way. And also to make sure we have enough lateral or outward pressure through the feet uh, in order to keep the knees over the toes so we don't see that collapsing inward or valgus knee crash. Now Randy also mentioned in his email that his hips hurt in his deadlift when he goes wider with his stance. Now, what I would say is, A, why do you wanna go wider? If it's because you think that you know, maybe that'll maximize your leverages or you know, you're know you just obviously gonna be stronger that way because you have long femurs uh, or whatever kind of things that you may have heard, 
if you go wider and it hurts your hips, but you can deadlift narrower and it doesn't hurt your hips, just deadlift narrower, man. That's the long and short of it. Lifting pain-free is always going to increase your strength more so than trying to maximize leverages and get into a position where you're in pain all the time. That's not gonna really give you a whole lot in the long term. So let's think about it that way. Let's ask ourselves those critical questions in terms of why you wanna position yourself that way. And hopefully a little bit narrower gives you a little bit more longevity, a little bit more ability to get in more volume, which is gonna to lead to strength in the long run. And our next video submission comes from Wujin. I believe I'm, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name correctly there. Um, but the deadlift here, Honestly, the biggest thing is we're just seeing a little bit of inability to get that back flat. Now, this is something that I've seen in a number of people. Uh, it's hard to tell from the side angle, but perhaps widening your stance ever so slightly would allow you to get your back flat by moving your thighs and some of the structures of your hips out of the way so that you can maintain or at least get into a more neutral spinal position. The other thing I would say based on your squat and how good your squat looks and how upright you're able to get is maybe look at trying to pull sumo. I've had a lot of success with a number of clients who struggle to achieve and maintain a neutral back position. And the successes that I've had have been as a result of teaching them sumo first because in most cases I find for a lot of people it's easier to get into a neutral back position pulling sumo and then transitioning back to conventional if that's where you're stronger or how you want to pull. Um, after learning some of the lessons uh, and some of the mechanics and some of the awareness to be able to find these good positions, then putting that back into practice as a conventional deadlifter. Um, so just based on what's going wrong and the, the fact that it's not a strength thing, it's not like you're getting into a good position and then losing it, it's that you're not able to get into a good position. So um, very frequently I'll recommend the cat-cow stretches. Um, I'll recommend widening the stance a little bit. Again, like I said, I can't see from a front angle. Uh, sorry, we'll just go back to the deadlift here. Um, but like I said, I can't see from the, the front or back angle. Only seeing side here, so I can't tell how wide you are, but a lot of times widening the stance can help. Uh, and sometimes going as far as switching to sumo, at least for a period of time, can really help teach you how to achieve those positions. Anyways, Wujin. I hope that helps you, buddy. Um, let me know how that works out for you. Maybe sumo's way stronger for you, who knows? So our next couple videos here come from Joshua. Now Joshua's doing some bench press and he said that his setup is pretty much copped straight from our bench tutorial video, that's great. Um, the biggest thing I'm seeing here is when you're coming down to your chest, you're loosening up as the bar comes into contact with your chest. So what this means, and if we go slowly through this, you can see right as you touch the chest, the shoulder blades creep up and you lose tightness and then you have to drive the shoulder blades down to reinitiate your press. If you keep those shoulder blades down, it's gonna result in your elbows staying better underneath the bar and it's gonna result in not losing tension on the chest. It's gonna result in you maintaining tension in your upper back and creating a better shelf for you to drive the bar up off of. So basically, try a lighter touch on the chest and try to maintain tension and position in your shoulder blades throughout the touch. Try not to loosen up as you get the touch and let the bar rest on your chest. Always keep the tension of the bar in your hands. Joshua also sent in some deadlifts here. Now, you'll notice the first rep, the back caves collapses a little bit, but actually there are a number of reps throughout the set where your back stays in a much better position. So unlike uh, Wujin, who was unable to achieve a neutral back position, in this case, you're able to achieve the back position, you're just not strong enough to hold it. So, uh, going back to Paco as well, I think the biggest issue here is gonna be patience. When you set up and have more intent with keeping your back angle tight, with keeping yourself in a good position. You can see a number of these reps, you do a better job of it. That first rep, I think, was sloppy and rushed. So I think what I want you to do is just focus more on keeping your back tight like you do in a number of these reps. Because you're able to do it, you're strong enough to maintain the position. It's just sometimes when the weight gets heavy or you get fatigued or you get lazy on a rep, we're losing that position. 
And anytime we're lifting, anytime we're training, we want to be practicing and we want to try as hard as we can to practice as many perfect or close to perfect reps as possible. Um, getting strong and, and becoming a good power lifter is as much about skills practice as it is about getting strong. So what I want you to do is I want you to really focus. If you have to trim your deadlift sets down in terms of the number of reps that you're doing or reset completely between reps, uh, little things like that can sometimes help. But the biggest thing is you're able to deadlift well. We just need to get a higher percentage of reps with more proficiency. So I would say look back at this video yourself and watch what you do right and what you do right, obviously, is, is maintaining a better back angle, maintaining trunk tension and tightness throughout the lift and not sacrificing positioning to get the bar off the floor. Um, and try to emulate that every rep. Try to make sure that from the first rep to the last, they're all the same and they all look that good. Anyways, guys, that's it for Form Check Friday. Uh, as some of you may have noticed, I'm wearing my Equip Bruise Tired shirt. These are still available for a short period of time as well as this slick, slick cap. Uh, so if you like the stuff, go pick it up. And uh, thank you for your submissions. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you guys next week for another Form Check Friday.